Okay, so I'm back here to talk about Terry Eagleton's literary theory some more. Um, and in this portion, I am going to talk mostly about my reactions to his discussion of postmodernism and postcolonialism in his afterword. Um, first off with postmodernism, and actually before I start, just to remind you, I am going over my own notes and my own reactions to this reading for my British literature class um, to help me understand it better. And if you happen to be reading the same text, then maybe this will help you. And if you have any um, notes, comments, criticisms, or contradictions, please let me know because it will probably help me a lot. Um, so talking about postmodernism. Um, it involves a level of absolutism that he seems to agree with, I think. Um, he seems to believe in the absolutes, and I have trouble with that, um, because I don't think there's any black and white. Um, I think there's always uh, levels of gray, and he seems to dispute that. So, he says that knowledge is relative to cultural context, so that to claim to know what the work... I'm sorry. Knowledge is relative to cultural context, so that to claim to know the world as it is, is simply a chimera. Truth is a product of interpretation, facts are constructs of discourse, and objectivity is just whatever questionable interpretation of things has currently seized power. Um, that seems like he is critical of it while also accepting it. This seems very contradictory. This seems very um, confusing, really, because... I mean, yeah, I think that knowledge is relative to, to cultural context. My culture um, may be different from your culture, and what we know and how we know it would therefore also be different. Um, so that seems obvious, and it seems like to say that we both know the world in the same way if we have different cultural context, contexts would be disingenuous. It would be... A falsehood it would be um, not quite right because we're not the same so how could we know something the same way um, he says that postmodernism postmodernism seeks to dismantle the intimidating aura of high modernist culture with a more demotic user-friendly art suspecting all hierarchies of value as privileged and elitist he says that there is no better or worst within this postmodernist theory, um, just different. And he says this as if the contrary is obvious. He says this like there is value to the hierarchy of high art versus low art, highbrow versus lowbrow, whatever. Um, and I feel like who made him the arbiter of this? Who? Why? Why does he get to decide? Um, because there's the sense, there's the connotation of distaste when he goes into this, um, the intimidating aura of high modernist culture, that seems very, like, he's too snotty for that. Um, and I feel like I'm being very critical of this, but that's because I feel like this is very exclusionary. I feel like this has very little to do with me except for to show me what I don't believe and what I don't, um, take from literature compared to what he takes from literature. Um, then he says that we are always installed firmly on the inside of the culture that we hope to criticize, so thoroughly constituted by its interests and beliefs that to put them into question would involve jumping out of our own skin. Um, and that, I actually agree with that level of postmodernism, that we can't separate ourselves from, all, from our culture, that he says, as long as what we utter is intelligible, we are already in complicity with the culture we seek to objectify, and therefore we are already in bad faith. But to say that we're already in bad faith because we can't separate myself from my culture, that's to argue something that I don't think is possible. I can't separate myself from my culture. I am my culture. I am my history. I am the product of my childhood, the product of my upbringing, the product of the neighborhood I grew up in, the state I grew up in, the socioeconomic status I grew up in. These are all things that I cannot separate from me. Those are all things that make me who I am. So 
I want to call bad faith back on him. Because if he's saying that it's bad faith to be unable to separate these, it seems like he's not understanding the fact that you can't. I don't understand how you could. If he has some insight to this, if anybody has some insight to, to how you separate yourself from your culture, I'd like to hear about it. Because I just, I'm not feeling that. Um, let's see. Then he talks about... We're going to skip past those notes, and we're going to go to um, post-colonialism. Post and he talks about questions of ethnicity have enriched radical politics, fixated on social class, and helped obscure the material similarities between ethnic groups. He's favoring Marxism here over, or saying that Marxism serves to lead you, ooh, I'm sorry. Favoring Marxism, which serves to delegitimize proponents of other isms. Um, he's saying that social, social class means more than other things when it comes to this post-colonialism. And I don't agree with that completely. Um, I, again, I think I, I sort of want to argue bad faith here because there, I, I don't see how you can separate the two. I mean, again, I'm getting repetitive, but... My ethnicity and my socioeconomic class are part of what make me who I am. And I can't just say, well, my ethnicity outside of socioeconomic class, because that, that doesn't make any sense. I can't say my socioeconomic class outside of my ethnicity. That doesn't make any sense. When the president says that women make 77 cents on the dollar, he's separating gender from other things, um, and that's something that doesn't make sense because that 77 cents on the dollar, that's white women. That's not all women. And that doesn't account for black women or Hispanic women or illiterate women or any other things that make a difference and you can't separate them out. So I feel like that's a false ratio that doesn't make sense. I feel like this is a false comparison that doesn't make sense. Um, to say that the question of ethnicity, like if, it, like if it is a question, it's not. It is, it, it is what it is. Um, it can't be questioned. It can't be separated out. It's not just one factor. It's part of who you are. And some people are more attached or more, um, I guess, into their ethnicity than others. Some people find their ethnicity to be more important to themselves than other people do. Um, but even the ones who don't feel that their ethnicity is important to them, it still makes you who you are. It still has an effect on your life. It still has an effect on how you consume literature or other forms of media and art. It still has an effect on how you interact with the world at large. So, again, bad faith. I just, I have issue with this because he's trying to separate these pieces that I don't think can be separated that cleanly. I think it's always more complicated than that. And this feels like an oversimplification, I'm sorry, oversimplification that I just can't deal with. So he says, or rather this is my impression. He, Eagleton is critical of post-colonialism because of the focus on self-identity as the other, um, while simultaneously criticizing the opposition of colonizing self and colonized other and he seems distasteful of the focus on difference without acknowledging his own privilege as not other. Um, and I think it's very telling that he says colonizing self. That speaks very much from his experience, but not everybody falls under that, co that category of colonizing self. Um, I am not as critical of post-colonialism post because I think that there is... Um, a vast level of rel relativity of how we consume this literature, how we consume this media based off of where we come from and what the history of that place is and what the social status is. And there's so many things that have an effect. And for him to say colonizing self erases me, erases lots of people like me who have never and probably will never be part of the colonizing self. I would argue that I belong to the colonized other, um, and this 
I feel like he focuses on difference to say, not that big a deal. But it's not... It's not like that. He he has the privilege to say, not that big a deal, because for him, it isn't. For him, he can erase the colonized other, because it's not him. It's someone else. I just have issue with that. I have a lot of problems with his take on literature in general, because it's very... I mean, I keep saying it. It's exclusionary, it's eliminationist, it's elitist, it's othering, and... How, as a woman, am I, am I supposed to feel about this? I don't feel like I fit into his expectations. Um, it just, it doesn't make sense. And so I looked him up on Wikipedia. I know, not an academic source, but it's a good starting point to get some information. And I just want to get like a ballpark idea of what this guy is like, because I was judging him based off of just this brief reading of the conclusion and the afterword, and I had a, a very harsh impression I just wanted to double check it and see what the other side of him is outside of this book that I was reading. And in Wikipedia it says that Eagleton concludes that an absolute does exist. Every person lives in a body that cannot be owned because nothing was done to acquire it and nothing besides suicide can be done to be rid of it. Our bodies and their subsequent deaths provide the absolute around which humankind can focus its actions. He's assuming an absolutism to the possession of the human body, um, but not all bodies are the same, and his interpretation that it, the human body cannot be owned because we didn't do anything to acquire it, I don't agree with that. And so I feel like I'm just fundamentally opposed to this guy. I just, I can't get into it because he deals so heavily in absolutes that if you don't fall into this or that, you don't fall into anything that he considers. He doesn't have anything besides A or B, yes or no, black or white, um, whatever. And I, I feel like that's a false dichotomy. I feel like there is a spectrum where there's gradations along the way, and he doesn't account for that. And that's why I, frankly, just don't like him. So that's my reaction to um, Literary Theory by Terry Eagleton, his conclusion and the afterword. Um, just a lot of thoughts about basically why I don't like him, and I am learning to not just accept the text as it is presented to me by teachers, professors, and others, um, and I'm learning to allow myself to question this sort of thing. And here's the start. Here's where I start questioning it by saying that I just don't like this guy. He doesn't make any sense to me. So there you have it. Thanks.